Welcome to the SACCORD C2I calculation tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you the different types of C2I calculation using the C2I plots and modifying the input data. SACCORD supports three different types of C2I calculation a downlink, an uplink and a bidirectional calculation. When you perform a C2I analysis the results will always be one of these three types. If you wish to understand how to do a C2I analysis between datasets you should view our C over I analysis tutorial. Let me start by showing you an example C2I calculation in the downlink. The calculation screen is split into four sections. In the top left section is the input data, including the victim data and interferer data. It shows the particular victim and interferer emission on which this calculation is based. You can modify any of the parameters as you wish. In the bottom left hand corner are the results. This is a read-only grid showing the C over I, margin and other metrics that may be useful. Each item can be expanded to see the values used in their calculation. For example for C we can expand this result and see the transmit EIRP, the transmit EIRP density, the receive gain and the free space path loss. Again where applicable these values can be expanded to see the values used in their calculation. Each time we modify the input data the results here are automatically updated. In the top right corner is a beam plot showing the relevant service areas, gain contour and gain towards the GSO diagrams. In this case, for C2I downlink calculation, the victim gain contour and service area and the interferer gain contour are used and displayed here. Each of these diagrams can be modified. They can be pointed to new GIMS diagrams or they can be imported as custom diagrams and then modified as you wish. The current earth station location associated with the current calculation is also displayed. For this case it is located at 103.74 east and 0.01 north. We can modify this by right clicking in the beam data tree and then editing its associated location or alternatively we can select it in the plot itself and then drag it to a new location. As we move the earth station around we can see that the results in the bottom left corner are automatically updated. Lastly, the frequency data is shown in the bottom right corner. Here we can see the frequencies included in the victim group and the frequencies included in the interferer group and the particular frequency pair which have been selected to base this calculation on. If you select a different overlapping frequency assignment in the plot, the assignment used will change to that one. Alternatively, you can manually specify the analysis frequency and the analysis overlap bandwidth in the input victim data here. Now let me go over the options available in this tab. We can reset our data back to the source data that we had when we opened the tab by pressing on the reset to source data button. Here we can see that after pressing the button the earth station location and frequency assignment selected have changed back to what they were when I started editing this tab. Next we can undo and redo changes we have made to the analysis with the undo and redo button. The next four options are toggles to show or hide various parts of the screen. The Find Earth Station Location button will find the Earth Station location to either minimise or maximise the available C over I metrics. For example, let me move the Earth Station to some other location. Now I want to find the Earth Station location that results in the worst case I over N, so I select the Find Earth Station Location menu item, select Find Worst Case Earth Station Location, and then choose I over N. You can find the worst or best case Earth Station locations inside the relevant service area associated with any of the key metrics. The Show Plot button draws a plot showing how the metric selected changes over the relevant service area or over the visible Earth. Here we can see a plot colouring the victim service area in accordance with the margin value. The red areas are areas of lowest margin. If we select the plot in the beam data, we have a number of options available to us, including refreshing the plot or changing the resolution of the plot. Let me change this value to high. This will increase the number of points plotted in the map. The higher the resolution, the better quality the plot, but the longer it takes to generate. We can also toggle the type of map to be displayed. For C over I plots, there are two types. Firstly, there is a value map, which shows how the chosen metric value changes, such as the plot we have here for margin. Alternatively, you can show a pass-fail map, which shows areas in which the metric passes or fails a reference value. For this particular case, the margin is always greater than zero, and so the entire map is green to indicate a pass. We can change the reference pass value by clicking on the pass value button and specifying some other value. For example, let me specify a value of 10 dB. Now you can see that there is an area where the margin fails the specified pass value of 10 dB. It is possible to show either value or pass fail maps for all of the key metrics. Let me put the value margin plot back on. 
You can toggle whether to only plot the map in the relevant service area or over the visible earth by clicking on the service area only toggle. Now whatever item you select in the beam data tree, the beam plot indicates all diagrams that are children of this node, and so it is useful to select the root node so that all diagrams are visible. It is clear to see how the margin falls off with the interferer gain contour in this example. The auto update button toggles whether the plot should automatically update every time you change any value that could impact on the plot. For speed reasons this is turned off by default and the plot can be manually refreshed by selecting the plot and then pressing the refresh button. Lastly, the report button generates a report on this specific case, allowing you to easily provide the information associated with this calculation to another party. Reports can either be based on the default template, which is shipped with the software, or on a custom template you can make yourself. Let me quickly show you what the default template looks like for this case. In the template output, the beam plot and frequency plot reflect how they look in your calculation, so it is possible to set up these diagrams so they reflect exactly what you wish to show before generating the report. For example, I could zoom in and rotate the map to display the key area before generating the report. As you can see, the modified diagrams are now included in the report. Next, let me show you an example C2I calculation in the uplink. It is very similar to the downlink calculation, except showing the relevant data items for a calculation in the uplink. For this case, we have two earth station locations, a victim earth station and an interferer earth station. When you choose the find earth station location or show plot options, you now need to specify whether you wish to use the victim or interferer earth station. For example, a victim earth station plot shows how the margin varies as the victim earth station moves in its service area. An interferer earth station plot shows how the margin varies as the interferer earth station moves in its service area. Lastly, let me show you an example c twi calculation for the bidirectional case. Once again, this is very similar to the downlink and uplink calculations, except showing the relevant data items for a calculation in the bidirectional case. For this case, we have two gain towards the GSO diagrams in addition to the other necessary diagrams. Once again, we can find the worst and best case earth station locations, as well as show a plot of how the various metrics change, either over the surface of the earth or inside the relevant service area. For this case, because the two satellite networks have a large orbital separation, there is only a relatively small portion of the earth visible to both satellites inside the victim service area. For more information on doing a C2I analysis between datasets, please view our C over I analysis tutorial. A link is provided in the description below this video. As of version 2.3 of SACCORD, some new features were added into the C2I calculation that I would like to take you through. Firstly, when defining the input data associated with the calculation, certain numerical fields can be input as a formula. Fields which support this are marked with an asterisk. For example, in the interferer emission data, the power and PSD fields can be input this way. Let me reduce the maximum power by 10 dB through the use of a formula. This also automatically changes the maximum PSD. You can turn off locking the power and PSD by clicking on this toolbar item. For this example it is on, so every time I change either the power or PSD the other changes by the same amount to keep the ratio constant. This change has been automatically reflected in the results. Maths formulas support many operators and functions including trigonometric or logarithmic functions. Let me now change the maximum power to a value using the maximum PSD and the necessary bandwidth. You can also reset the value back to its default value by right clicking on the header and choosing reset. As you can see the result of the analysis has changed back to its previous value. The other new key feature are constraints. You can associate constraints with the calculation in order to try to solve potential coordination issues. So for this example we have a downlink calculation with a negative margin. If we click on the constraints button in the toolbar we can specify a general limit to solve this problem. Constraints which apply to downlink calculations are available, and the constraint that apply to either uplink or bidirectional calculations are greyed out. Let me add a new downlink interferer max EARP density constraint by clicking on the add button and then selecting it from the list. In the dialog that opens I want to specify the limit as an EARP density limit and I'm going to specify a value of minus 25 dBW per hertz. Next I click on OK and give the constraint a name. The individual constraints can be toggled on or off through the use of the checkbox next to the constraint. Since this constraint is checked, it will be applied. Next, when I click on OK, the result automatically updates 
The total shows that constraints are applied and you can see that the margin is now positive. If you look inside the result i, you can see that the transmit IRP density is minus 25 as set by the constraint, with the transmit PSD modified to a value to provide this transmit IRP density. Note that this also affects the transmit IRP by the same amount. You can add any number of constraints, and if you use constraints in your C2I analysis in order to generate a given C2I calculation, they will be automatically added into the constraints dialog here. For more information on this, please see our C2I analysis tutorial. Thank you for watching. This ends the C2I calculation tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact us using the information in the description below.